Anyway, this part of the graph is said to be increasing as you move left to right. So let's see, let's do this in blue. Increasing. And I have to write sideways. And then this is even harder, decreasing. Because it's going down. This is constant. A flat line is constant. Then you start going up again. I'm just going to say I N C. And then this is constant. OK. So maybe I should even use different colors. Maybe that would be a good way to do this. Um, if I made increasing blue. See, it's going up from left to right. And decreasing red, which I'm going to have to make bigger, thicker. There. Well, that's better than nothing. All right, so down. And we can let constant be green, and we can keep that coding through the whole thing. So yeah, you're going forever. And then uh, blue again for increasing. Now, you need to be able to tell what's increasing and decreasing. And one of the things that, uh, uh, yeah, okay, that's easy to see now that you know what we're talking about left to right. Um, you have to be able to say where it's happening. And the word where is tricky because in math, the word where, just like in English, signifies location. But in math, where means where on the X axis. What are the intervals where increasing is happening? Where are the intervals or interval where decreasing is happening? And where are the intervals or, yeah, are, because there are two. Where are the intervals where, where a constant behavior is uh, showing itself? And how you tell that is like this. Um, what color can I, I'm gonna use this color. Okay, from out here at negative infinity, all the way into where the increasing stops, right there at negative six on the X axis. Then the decreasing starts at negative six and stops at negative four on the x axis. That's how you give your directions. Now, this graph is constant until it gets to x equals negative one. And then it starts increasing at x equals negative one until it gets to x equals zero. Notice you wouldn't say six. It's where it's where what the x's are on the x axis. And then the graph is constant from x equals zero all the way to infinity. So this is how we're going to say it. Need more room there. 
Okay, our increasing takes place from negative infinity to negative six. So this part of the x-axis is where you've got increasing going on. And this part of the x-axis is where you have increasing going on. So I will say negative infinity to negative six. Unioned up with this part, this blue part of the x-axis, which is negative one to zero. X equals negative one to X equals zero. And now at some point soon, I'll explain why I never use brackets, but hold that question. Decrease. I do have a question. Yeah. Yes. What's in between the parentheses, the U, what does that represent? That's the way you stick two intervals together when there's a break. Okay, and these are all X's on the X axis? Yes, okay. yes. It's like a police officer, I just thought about this. Um, there's been a wreck and a car has gone off the road and down a hill. Nobody's hurt, not in my stories. Um, yeah, so that's the event right there. But, the officer has to radio in where it happened, exactly where. And so he would give directions for, well, uh, it's from negative six to negative four on Highway X. Okay. So from negative six to negative four, we have decreasing all the way down the hill going on. And now we have two areas of the x-axis where the graph is constant from negative four to negative one and from x equals zero goes forever out to positive infinity. So the constant part takes place from negative four to negative one. There's a little gap there where it's increasing, so I have to union it up. And then X is zero here, so from zero out to positive infinity. And the reason we never use brackets when we're talking about increasing or decreasing is that um, if you look at this point right there and, and the X coordinate below it, would you say that negative six is a point of increase or a point of decrease? In math, it can't be both. It has to be either a point of increase or decrease. But you have these two events simultaneously ending and beginning at the same instant at X equals negative six. But if we had a bracket, I might say, well, um, uh, we were increasing until negative six and then started decreasing after negative six. I don't know that that's true. So, in order to avoid that altogether, you never use brackets when you're talking about increasing, decreasing, or constant. So, no brackets. No brackets. No brackets.
Now you see these arrows can mess you up. And that's why they're there for this particular question. You need to not look at the arrows because we always think left to right when we're talking about increasing or decreasing or constant. OK, well, this graph is decreasing. And that arrow does mean that it's, it, you know, this is going from negative infinity on the X axis. It's been decreasing forever and forever and forever until it gets to negative one, negative two, negative three, negative four on the X axis. Decreasing. Then it becomes constant for what seems to be a really long time from negative four to one, two, three, four, to positive four. And then it starts increasing forever and ever and ever. So from four to infinity, this graph is going to be increasing. And so our, our intervals of increase decrease And constant should really be constant C, but nobody asked me. This thing is decreasing forever from negative infinity into negative four. It's constant from negative four to positive four. and starts increasing at x equals four and goes out to positive infinity. And I've never seen anything but interval notation be used for this purpose. Miss Barbara? Yeah. If it's on the left side of the quadrant, is it always going to be decreasing even if that arrow is pointing up as it would be increasing on the left side? It's decreasing on the left side, yes. I didn't hear all of what you said, but um, yeah, it's increasing here. And <clears throat> decreasing. No, it's not. I lied to you. Constant. and decreasing here. See what's really going on is it's going down, down, down. This this arrow just means that the line goes forever. Oh, okay. But it doesn't signify a direction. Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh yeah, I should do that, shouldn't I? Boom, boom. Boom, 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 and boom, boom. I've never thought of that. All these years, I've never thought of putting arrows. This is great. Thank you. You have motivated me. You've inspired me. All right, now this one's hard, but is it? Is it? Let's divide this up into constant and increasing and decreasing before we panic. This is constant. This is increasing. 
this is increasing, and this is decreasing. Okay, now we just have to find the end points. The end points of the constant are going to be a little complicated because of that open hole right there. Okay, so from here to here, And now it looks like we would use a bracket because the graph actually starts here on the left, always starts on the left, and it's a closed in hole. So this actually is, I've never seen this before, this is going to be a bracket and this is going to be a parenthesis. Okay. So let's write that right away. Constant, yeah, it's usually in this order though. Constant from negative seven, negative 10, negative nine, negative eight, negative seven. From negative seven, nope, bracket this time because of those closed in holes. Negative seven, to negative one, negative two, negative three, negative four. Negative four, parenthesis. Now this part of increasing, notice this is a closed in hole. That's going to be a bracket. And this is going to be a bracket. And this is where the graph is increasing if you're giving directions to someone. You don't see that. And in fact, while I'm at it, now here we have a quandary. We have Hmm, what would I do? Well, let's play it by ear. Um, this is decreasing from here to here. Now, for the moment, I'm going to put brackets, but I think I'm going to change it. Now, maybe the uh, people who program this for the publisher, maybe they don't know anything about math and they didn't see any problem with it. Um, OK, and. The way it looks right now, there would also be a bracket here, but there can't be. So I'm telling you that right now. OK, with increasing happening here. And decreasing happening here, but we're not done because what we're doing is one, two, three. So this is three. And this is four, five, six. Six is a big problem. We're suggesting that six is actually one of the points of decrease and at exactly the same time, a point of increase, and it cannot be. So, they might just use brackets, but I am positing that that's not correct, okay? Because we cannot say that six is two things at the same time. So, what I am going to do, because I think I know more than the people who wrote the book. Yeah, I have an ego sometimes. I'm going to say this. I, I'm going to change both of these to parentheses. And I don't know, 
maybe the world will come to an end. What? Never mind. I'm just going to write over them. You're just going to have to see what the answer is when you get there. I'm going to have to see. OK, but let us move on. Oh, well, wait a minute. Decreasing. Decreasing. I am going to say this. Dare I? Dare I? Oh, no. Yes, I am going to say so. And increasing. Is going to be here. And this is definitely bracket bracket because that is a paren. Uh, but how do I know which side to make a paren? Maybe it just didn't copy well and once an open hole. I don't know. Um, we're going to have bracket bracket. Negative one, negative two, negative three, negative four. Negative four to negative two. And then there's a gap, right? So whenever there's a gap, you put a U. And then, aha, uh -huh. okay. Again, I'm taking a chance here. Probably be counted wrong, who knows, at this point. Six to eight. Hmm. Now I'm very curious, so stay tuned. Okay, we have only a few minutes to go. We've got 10 minutes. We need to talk about relative maxima and relative minima. That's the plural of maximum and minimum. This point right there, zero, one, zero negative one, Oh, well, it goes all the way to negative 50, so that must really be at negative one. OK, that's all right. This is called a relative maximum. A relative maximum point. This is called a relative minimum point. Right? In its own little neighborhood, that's the highest point. But it's not always going to be the highest point because the graph is going to keep going up, 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 up. And at all these points, the graph is going to be higher. So this is not the absolute maximum point. This doesn't have an absolute maximum because nobody knows where infinity is. This goes all the way down to negative infinity. This is not, this is not the totally absolute lowest point. But in its own little neighborhood, it's definitely a lowest point. You could consider this to be a hilltop and a valley, right? A hilltop is not the highest point on earth. And a valley is not the lowest point on Earth, unless it's what, Death Valley? Is that the lowest point on Earth? No, it's not. It's in the ocean. I used to know the name of it. You can look it up. What is the lowest point on Earth? Anyway, that ain't it. So uh, this is the relative minimum point. It's not the relative minimum. The relative maximum and the relative minimum of the function is a number. And the number it is, is the y-coordinate. 
So negative one is the relative. Maximum. It's actually the relative maximum value reached by f of x. But it's just called the relative maximum. And here, the relative minimum is negative 33. Negative 33 is the relative rel min reached by f of x. The relative minimum. So, a relative minimum point is different from a relative minimum. A relative maximum point is different from a relative maximum. So the minimum and maximum are always going to be on the Y, right? Yes. Yes. Okay. Well, that is you look at the Y coordinates, right? OK. Good. Here we've got a relative maximum that is also an absolute maximum. And OK, so but, but they're calling it in the book, they're calling it a relative maximum point, a relative. Maximum point. And the relative maximum value is 5.25. Notice that on this side we're increasing and on this side we're decreasing. In fact, if you come back up here, you're increasing, decreasing. Well, I'll put increase over here. Decreasing. For that reason, relative maximum points and relative minimum points are also called turning points because that's where a change happens from increasing to decreasing or decreasing to increasing. So let's write it right here, because that's important. Relative, now this is the plural. Relative maxima and minima well, I should say relative, relative minima Mi minima are also called turning points. Look at the highest, it doesn't matter what numbers are here. Look at the highest power, the degree of the polynomial. You can know what direction the graph is going out at negative infinity and what direction the graph is going out at positive infinity just based on what's called the leading term. Here the leading term is positive and odd. OK, 
Okay, I want to write that down because it's very important. Leading term is positive and odd. That guarantees you that out at the extremes, negative infinity and positive infinity, the graph is going to look like this. Guaranteed. Now all of that's been shown with very, very um, um, advanced mathematical proofs beyond the scope of this class. I think I had to learn them once long ago, but I'm not even sure of that. It all kind of goes together after a while. Um, here, look at this. Here's your leading term. The leading term is six, which is odd. I'm going to write over here because I'll, I won't be as likely to, to uh, run out of room. Okay, the degree of the polynomial is six. That number is even. The leading term is negative. I am guaranteed that out at positive and negative infinity, and maybe not even that far, the graph is going to be turned down on both sides like that. Negative infinity, positive infinity. This is called end behavior, end behavior, because we're talking about what happens out at the ends. Guaranteed. Just because the degree is even and the leading term is negative. Degree even. Leading term. Is negative. Now here, notice I don't care about anything but the leading term. Okay, and then we go on to something else. Well, we're also going to talk about the leading term though. Here, the degree is even. The degree is four, and four is an even number. So the degree is even. The leading term is positive. Now, when the degree is even and the leading term is positive, that guarantees you that out at negative infinity and positive infinity, the graph is going to go up 
on both sides. And I'm going to make a chart right here about end behavior and the leading term test. No, it's a. It's called the leading term test, so that's a, a proper name. All right, so if the leading term is. of even degree and positive you're going to have up on the right and up on the left if the leading term is of even degree and negative you're going to have both sides going down out at the extremes. Now, if the leading term is of odd degree, and positive, The graph is going to go up on the right, out near positive infinity, and down on the left, out at negative infinity. And then it'll do whatever it's doing in here. And then if the leading term is of odd degree and negative, you'll go up on the left and down on the right. So that's my little chart. 